Okay, I'm going continuing to go through the topic of 958 not for profit entities. Uh, we're continuing our discussion of the financial, the interrelated entities. And as we saw in the, the last video, um, we discussed the scope and scope expectations related to what types of entities need to um, fall in line with the requirements of 958 20. And so in this video, we will see what types of transactions um, need to comply with this particular subtopic. Okay, so we see that um, requirements for um, which types of transactions the subtopic applies to um, here. And we have the following types of transactions, A and B. So the first one is A, in which um, an entity, the donor, makes a contribution um, by transferring assets to a non-profit entity or a charitable trust, and that is the recipient entity. So we have a donor sends assets to a recipient entity, and then that recipient entity accepts the assets from the donor, and he or she agrees to use those assets on behalf of or transfer those assets or the return on the investment of those assets or both to a financially interrelated, interrelated entity, the beneficiary that is specified by the donor. So for the transaction to apply with this subtopic, a donor has to send assets to a recipient entity and that recipient entity agrees to send them um, or the return on the investment of those assets to a beneficiary um, that is defined as a financially interrelated entity, which we defined in the prior video. All right, and just to make sure we understand uh, the semantics of things here, let's see what how they define a contribution. So this would be the amount that is sent from the uh, donor to the recipient entity. So we see that a contribution is an unconditional transfer of cash or other assets to an entity or settlement or cancellation of its debt and a voluntary non-reciprocal transfer by another entity acting other than as an owner. So um, to specify here that this just distinguishes um, contributions from exchange transactions, which are reciprocal transfers in which uh, each party receives and sacrifices approximately equal value. It's also not an investment by owners and uh, distributions to owners, which are non-reciprocal transfers between the entity and its owners. But in this case, if there are owners, then it's a not, not a not-for-profit entity. And they also specify that it's a voluntary non-reciprocal transaction. So uh, we can't say that impositions of taxes or legal judgments, fines, and thefts um, would be a contribution because they're not voluntary transfers. Okay, so uh, now we understand what a contribution, um, how it's defined, we can uh, better understand the transactions that are considered applicable to the subtopic. Um, so uh, summarizing, the donor sends a contribution to the recipient entity who's a not-for-profit not or a charitable trust, and then that recipient entity is required to send those um, assets to a beneficiary. And that's uh, defined as a financially interrelated entity as we defined in the prior video. So this type of transaction falls um, in line with the subtopic that we're going through, the subtopic 958-20. Um, and also other um, transactions that might apply to the subtopic um, are similar to this A that we just discussed, but they're not contributions um, for the following reasons. And the first is that the recipient entity um, is related to the beneficiary in a way that causes the transfer to be reciprocal. So as we saw in the uh, definition of contribution, um, it has to be a non-reciprocal transfer. So in this case, maybe the uh, relationship between the recipient entity and the beneficiary um, is reciprocal in nature, so that makes it not be a contribution. Um, however, it would still fall under the scope of this uh, subtopic because um, they're financially interrelated entities um, through which um, assets are sent um, from the recipient entity to the beneficiary. And another example of a non-contribution um, a transfer of assets that would apply under this subtopic include um, conditions imposed by the resource provider or the relationships between the parties um, make the transfer of assets to the recipient entity revocable or repayable. Okay, so since the um, uh, recipient entity um, is required, sends the, the assets to the beneficiary, but the beneficiary is able to, or rather the um, recipient entity is able to um, claw back those funds from the beneficiary, um, that might make it not be defined as a contribution. However, in this instance, in the subtopic, um, this type of transaction still qualifies um, as applicable in the subtopic. So if these transactions um, happen at the entity, between financially interrelated entities as defined in the prior video, then they are required to follow this, uh, this topic, 958, and subtopic 95820 um, as it relates to financially interrelated entities. Uh, also, this 15-4 uh, tells us that the subtopic applies to transfers addressed by the preceding paragraph, this one right here, of cash and other assets, and that uh, these types of other assets could include securities, land buildings, use of facilities or utilities, materials and supplies, intangible asset services, and also un unconditional promises to give those items in the future. So when we're considering uh, this term, uh, contributions or transfers of assets, it doesn't necessarily just have to be cash. It could be any of these types of assets, as well as uh, promises to give those assets some at some point in the future. So any of these types of transactions um, need to follow the ASC 958-20 uh, financially interrelated entities. So in our next videos, 
we will go through the requirements of this uh, financially interrelated entities subtopic um, and how these types of transactions are supposed to be compliant with it.